Do you want to check out IT Pro TV but aren't ready to commit? We're making a few episodes from our most popular courses free for you to try here on YouTube so you can see what they're all about. Enjoy this episode and head over to itpro.tv when you're ready to see the full course. There is a wealth of knowledge out there when it comes to cyber threat intelligence. Where do you find it? What do you do with it? Stick around to find out. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing through our SISA Plus series, and we've got a wealth of acronyms to throw at you today. And, well, we're going to start out with an acronym called STIX. Dan, tell me about <laughs> <Yeah>. this one. <laughs> so STIX is the Structured Threat uh, Information Expression. Yes. Structured Threat got that. Information Expression. Right. What is this? And what's funny, it's, it's technically S-T-I-E, but they got a little funny with the E. They took the... Anyway, you get it. It's STIX. Right. What is STIX? What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about CTI, right? Cyber Threat Intelligence. We're all, hopefully, we're doing some analyzing of our threat intelligence. We're figuring it out. What are our possible actors? What are their motives? What are the uh, techniques that they use, the TTPs, right? The tactics, techniques, and uh, procedures that they engage in. Let's profile them out. Well, I've, I've built all this information up, but how do I share that with the community at large? People that are trying to do the exact same thing, because it just doesn't make sense for us to reinvent the wheel every day. If you've got good intelligence and I've got good intelligence, we should be sharing these things. And STIX is a way for us to do this. And what this does is it allows us to take our CTI and basically format it or structure it in a way that is... Uh, standardized, right? We, we have the ability to make it to where it's something that I can expect certain fields to be filled out and information to be given in a certain way. And then that way I can then take that and ingest it. Now, the way they're doing it for sticks is they're basically, they're just using JSON, right? That good old Java, I, this is where the JavaScript acronyms, object notation. I knew, it, I knew he'd know. I knew he'd know. I always just call it JSON. What I was going to say, in fairness, there's a lot of acronyms here lot. that I don't it's know. <laughs> it's going to hurt us today. It's acronyms. Uh, but yes, they just use JSON to format the thing. And that way it is in that structure, right? Hence the uh, part of the name structured threat information uh, expression, how we're expressing that structured threat information. You get the idea, hopefully. Now, once we have that, how do I get it to, to Wes? If he's in the same interest, he's trying to ingest and grab a hold of that information. How would, he, how would I get it from me to him? I email it, maybe write it in a letter, send it to him with a postcard? No, that's a, that's a bad way. I mean, it's doable, but it's not really a good idea, right? Because it's going to take a long time. So what they did was they created a way for us to do that in a reasonable manner, which is through taxi. And taxi is basically the idea that we are going to uh, make some sort of transport mechanism for our sticks data, okay? So taxi, an important one is called uh, Trusted Automated Exchange of Intelligence Information, T-A-X-I-I. -I. Get that right, right? Should be following that bouncing ball. Um, it is a REST API. That allows us through HTTP and HTTPS to transport that information. Basically, a server service for that. Hey, who wants some taxi or who, who wants some uh, sticks information to fill out or to try to manage or work with and get that information in a, in a usable way? We got a taxi service that's available and you can go. Now, some of these are paid for. Some of them are free. I found a couple of free sources. Uh, so that we can work with this. We'll take a look at some of those management resources uh, closer to the end of the show. But I did find a great website for us to look at. So if you really want to go down the rabbit hole on both of these things, this, this website is a phenomenal resource. Again, I'll add it to the learner resources so that uh, you can go there yourself. You don't have to try to memorize any kind of URL. Let's jump into the computer. Let's take a look at it. It is oasis-open, just so if you want to see it. It's at GitHub. It's a GitHub. Uh, .io page. And here's sticks, right? Structured threat information expression is a language and serialization format used to exchange cyber threat intelligence, right? Covered that. And then trusted 
automated exchange of intelligence, uh, intelligence information, taxi, application layer protocol for the communication of cyber threat information in a simple and scalable manner. Really cool. Now, that's not the coolest part, right? Yeah, you give me some definitions, kind of showing you how relationship works and um, here are taxi collections and how they're disseminated. Uh, really good stuff. And you can click these learn more buttons or you can go to the top here and you have these two options, sticks and taxi. Hit the drop down. You get a wealth of knowledge for both of these things. If you are a cyber analyst or if you want to become a cyber analyst, this is stuff that you should be filling the old noodle with. Okay. So if I want to do like, I don't know, let's just go to the introduction and see how that works here. Talking about what is sticks, why you should care, view examples, always nice, right? To be able to understand kind of how it's structured and what that looks like. Some very important pieces of information when it comes to sticks objects, these sticks domain objects, SDOs. You're going to want to memorize that. Put that in the noddle, in the noggin. You have attack pattern campaigns, courses of action, identity, indicator, intrusion sets, malware, observed data, report, threat actor, tool, and vulnerability. I'm not saying you got to memorize that whole thing, but you should familiarize yourself with those SDOs, okay? Uh, they're good stuff. And of course, we have right there next to them some information about that. So like observed data conveys information observed on a system or network, gives you like an IP address. So again, it's just grabbing all those little pieces of data, trying to give them a category to sit under and then formatting them in a way that we can then grab it in a, in a way, okay? So here's another thing you need to know about is the sticks relational objects. These guys right here are SROs. A lot of times when you look at sticks, what they're trying to do is create some sort of relation between events, what they call it. You know, so uh, if I had this event happen, here are the things that happen, here are the SDOs and the way that occurred. Now, is there any correlation between the two things? Never hurts, right? So it says, use to link two SDOs and to describe how they are related to each other. So we're always looking for a relationship, some sort of connection. So I can go, hmm, this might be, a, I think that's a part of this. That might be this APT group, or that might be that. So you start getting a better picture, right? And all this goes to us just trying to do a better job of defending our networks. Of course, you have siting as well. Uh, Let's see here. Here is the structure of sticks. Like I said, a little JSON action. Never heard anybody, right? We're seeing type. This is a campaign. The ID. This is probably just some sort of arbitrary information that they created. It looks like a, um, like a UUID or something. Uh, here we have when it was created. The name. This is Green Group's attack against finance, and then the description for it. So just a really simplistic. Uh, version of some sort of sticks information that could then be adjusted into a taxi server and grabbed and hey here we go we can exchange this information it's great okay let us uh move on let's go back and we'll hit the taxi just take a look in introduction to taxi here be aware of the collections and the channels and what they mean right so a collection is an interface to a logical repository of cti objects provided by a taxi server that allows a producer to host a set of CTI data can be requested by consumers. And then a channel is maintained by a taxi server and a channel allows producers to push data to many consumers and consumers to receive data from many producers. So it's more of a, an average instead of more a one-to-one, -one, it's a multiple to, to one kind of idea. All right, so just familiarize yourself with that stuff uh, and that should help you out. Really good, very um, uh, best practice kind of thing that you're gonna wanna wrap your mind around. You know, Dan, in another episode uh, that we did, uh, I learned of the acronym known as, uh, you know, uh, Indicators of Compromise. Yeah. So help me out with this one. Mandy at One's open source framework known as OpenIOC. Uh, where does that come into play? Yeah, so OpenIOC, another basically the same kind of idea is uh, we're trying to format and structure cyber threat intelligence in a way that is ingestible by other entities to share that out community-like, right? Um so FireEye, which was Mandiant, I think, at some point, uh, which I think is now FireEye. I hope I'm getting that correct. They had developed their own sticks kind of thing, and they called it OpenIOC. This was an XML formatted instead of JSON, but you get the idea at this point. Hey, we want to structure the information that we have so that you can easily pass it from one person to the next. 
And uh, if we take a look at FireEye, they got a good page here. Again, in the learner resources, and I will, that was way too small for everybody to see. Uh, kind of gives you an overview of use cases for finding malware, utility, looking at methodology, um, investigative, here are the components. And they even have this lovely tool right here, which is the uh, IOC editor, which I believe is still available. I think it's, um, ooh, that got huge. I'll just zoom. There you go. Kind of giving you some of those, those CTIs coming right in there, right? The name, this is evil.exe, which is, we believe is a backdoor. Here's the author of that. Uh, right, there's a GUID. There is a, uh, when it's created, when it's been modified, some description, all that information, being able to come in here and you create that so that you can share that out. And there's a couple other tools that you can go along with that as well. But the um, IOCE or the IOC editor is gonna be your bread and butter when it comes to working with open IOC for actually working with it and dealing with it. So a good tool right there, just to be uh, familiarized with as well. Um, and they call it out on the exam, I believe. So that's another reason we want to bring it up. Nice. So we got a, you got one open source platform there. Now there is another open source platform that we need to talk about. Tell me about, and I'm going to try this one, MISIP or M-I-S-P. Wait, M-I-S-P. Yeah, I got it right. Wow, that's awesome. Tell me about that open source framework. The Malware Information Sharing Project. Oh, it rolls right off the tongue. Right? Again, right? This is a really same, same uh, what is it? Same book, different chapter, right? This is all about CTI and getting it. This is specifically going into malware. We can jump back into uh, my website or here that I have open, which is the MISP project, misp-project.org. I'm on the features page because the homepage didn't really offer a ton of information. Make sure you guys can see all this. But uh, a threat intelligence platform for sharing, storing, and correlating indicators of compromise of targeted attacks, threat intelligence, financial fraud information, vulnerability information, or even counterterrorism. Ooh. Sounds interesting. You never know. You might uh, get a job in their MISP shop. They use that. You want to be familiarized with that. You don't have to. I, I don't believe for the exam that you're going to be have to be asked to like create any of this or say specific, you know, click this button and do that and click that button. And more like what are our um, indicator management systems and uh, what's this? Uh, which one uses JSON? Those would be the type of, uh, of questions I would expect to be asked. So you just need to be familiar with each one, different types, what they do, what, uh, which one uses JSON, which one uses XML, which one is focused on malware. Hopefully you're getting the idea at this point. But here you go. Kind of a screenshot. It's an efficient IOC and indicators database. So again, reaching into some repository of information so that we can disseminate it back out to people that need it, that is um, relevant to their situation, their organization. So I would, I would recommend going over this and just kind of familiarizing yourself again a little deeper with this. I'm just kind of handing you some resources and giving you the basics. It's really up to you to really dive deep if this is relevant to you to fully understand, right? Right now, I'm just telling you, you probably just need to be uh, familiar with it. You don't need to be a master at it, but have a good idea of what's going on with each one of these guys, all, uh, with Styx, with Taxi, with OpenIOC, and with MISP. That's going to be a big help for you on the exam. So, Dan, if I want to put a, maybe some utilities in my toolbox, what would we be looking at here? Yeah, so there are a couple of management services that will help you work with this information and uh, give you uh, an idea of what it looks like in real life. Some, some um, use, resources I found for us so that we can see that practical way in which this information is actually used. So let's jump back into the computer here. I've got one spun up here. This is an actual appliance that I downloaded from a company called Anomaly, and this is called Stax. And um, I'm not 100% sure on what Stax means other than I know it works with Stix data, right? And Taxi, right? So it's Stix and Taxi. All rolling in one, you get a dashboard. I just went to their website. Again, I'll make that available for you in the, in the learner resources so that you can go. I just got this running as a virtual machine. So I've got my own server. And then I connected it to some taxi services and allowed it to start polling for data. And that's where all these analytics come from, okay? So this is the most recent one here. You can see it's um, as of yesterday. So if I click on this, it's gonna give me some information, a couple of URLs, telling me this is observable URL, the classification that it's public, the confidence score, the indicator type, this looks like it's a fish URL. Uh, of course, the regular type, which is URL, severity. We have TLP, which I'm not 100% sure on what that is. 
um, indicator source. So this comes from fishtank.com. But the cool thing is, is if you click on that, I'll scroll out, it'll open up another page. You'll have to create an account with Anomaly so that you can access this uh, specific data. Let's see if I can't make it a little more visible. There we go. And you can see over here, it's kind of giving me some more information. Again, here's the indicator. Here's the country of origin, the ASN, the organization, and then uh, analysis links. So from URL void, virus total, web of trust. So, and I can click on these links. Like if I click on virus total, it takes me to virus total and shows me that nine engines detected this domain. So that might be good information for me if I'm looking to stop phishing campaigns from Africa. That's, I know that's where my APT threats come from or that I have known threats that are coming my way. I'm gonna start profiling. Oh, look, that's, that's good information for me to know. And then it's got from Certigo and Fortinet, Google Safe Browsing, letting us know that those are phishing, that they have, they have labeled that as a phishing site, right? So a really cool tool. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to, let me get rid of that. Let's go back, I don't need this anymore. It's kind of showing you how it gets disseminated out there. Coming from Johannesburg, South Africa. So just more information, getting all that information as much as you possibly can so that you can really do a good job of profiling it if you're doing threat modeling or something of that case. Uh, this could be great for you to do that. We also have a who is SIRS down here. No DNS from passive DNS, but um, we did have a who is. And there's a lot of redacted for privacy kind of stuff, but you never know, right? So let's go back. And I'll show you where my taxi servers are. Just go into the settings. And then I was able to just click add site right over in this area. And there's my actual. I've got the anomaly limo server, which is by default, you can just connect to that. I also found this one, Hail a Taxi, all free. So you can at least get some hands on with this stuff. And then this other one, which is IBM's X Force Exchange Research, Collaborate, and Act on Threat Intelligence. It's actually really impressive. I'm just signed as a, as a guest, but I'll want to play around with this and get my own login information. Um, showing all these risks, early warning feeds, recent IBM X Force advisories. So we've got Phishing with Agent Tesla. And it's going to show us the information about that. Summary, Agent Tesla is a well-known piece of malware sold throughout licensing system and used to steal information for victim systems. For a blah, 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 and off it goes, right? Giving you more information. Threat activity, we've got a total of 783 in the last hour, right? Just really good analytics. Vulnerabilities. This is where I, I spend most of my time is right here under vulnerabilities because just really cool stuff. Disk boss input directory buffer overflow reported as of April 2nd, 2020. Hmm, maybe if I'm running disk boss, I would want to know about that and start to learn a little bit more. But there are some tools that will try to help you understand how this information is gathered, how it's structured, and how we actually deal with it in real life land uh, when you're talking about CTI. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about a lot of stuff here in this episode. Keep in mind, we've talked about things like sticks. We've talked about taxi, open IOC, and then finally, oh, I can't forget the uh, MISP, and we rounded out with some uh, utilities you could put in your toolbox. Now, that's not all we got to say. We got a lot more to say in SISA Plus, but it's going to take you joining us there. Take care. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.